On February the 8th, 2001, we heard the disturbing news about a man named Robert Hansen. He was a 25-year veteran of the FBI and an expert in counterintelligence. He had been arrested on espionage charges. He had been accused of passing top secret information to the Soviet Union and then later to Russia. And that all started back in 1985. The federal agents apprehended him at a Virginia park just minutes after he had left a package under a wooden footbridge, which investigators say was a drop site that he had used for delivering secret documents to his Russian handlers. The Washington Post reported that experts were looking very closely at the computers at the FBI and State Department to make sure that Hansen, who was a skilled programmer, had not sabotaged them or created vulnerabilities in them that would allow the Russian spies to steal sensitive information while this man was in jail. But as the information came out about Hansen, we learned that he was a faithful church member who attended church every week. And in addition, he was a member of a group called Opus Dei. It was a conservative religious order that was very strongly anti-communist and stressed moral righteousness and integrity. Now listen, you had to wonder when that all unfolded if Robert Hansen had heard what was being said at his church as he sat there Sunday after Sunday. You have to wonder if the truth was being expounded. And did he not hear what was being said in the religious order that he was a part of? Did you ever wonder how it is that some people hear the truth over and over and over again but never put it into practice? You know, the truth is, Robert Hansen was not and is not alone. There are people like him in churches all over the country. Matthew 13, 14 explains it this way. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. I believe we have a serious problem in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somehow there's a disconnection between faith and practice passage of scripture we're looking at is in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 through 40 but we'll just start with verse 1 today now therefore hearken O Israel unto the statutes and to the judgments which I teach you for to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given to you that you may live, Deuteronomy 4.1. What would you say to people that read this passage of Scripture? What do you think God's saying to the Hebrews in the context? And what does that have to do with our situation? Well, as I was studying this, I think I kind of heard the Lord say to tell you what He already said. And to tell you that He meant what He said when He said it, and He hasn't changed His mind. So here's what He says. Listen to the statutes which I teach you to observe that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take away from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Now, in the context of the scripture, Moses is causing the people to reflect on their past rebelliousness. He wants them to think about the need for present obedience. It's been said that the devil wants us to forget what we should remember, and he wants us to remember what we should forget. And while it is true, our sins are put under the blood, and we need to live like people who are forgiven, we need to know that the Word of God says he buries our sins as far from us as the east is from the west, and buries them in the deepest of the sea. But we need to remember our past sins and our past obedience only in as much as that as we remember them, we hope to not fall into the same pattern of behavior or the traps that we fell into before. 1 Corinthians 10, 2 warns us, Therefore let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. The passage says, Hearken that you may live. And I will say and agree, yes, this is the Old Testament, 
And yes, to those of you that don't like to hear about the law, this is referring to the law. It is the Bible, after all. And the law was a point of faith to which obedience, obedience, obedience was the evidence of faith. Obedience was the evidence of faith. Obedience was the evidence of faith. In that day, obedience was more than a hyperbole. That you may live was more than a hyperbole. It was a fact that their actual life or death depended on their obedience to God as they faced their enemies. Their enemies were the enemies of God. Their enemies were the enemies of God. And he would fight for them if and only if, if and only if, they were obedient. Without the blessing of God, they would very soon be in trouble. He warns them, so in this case, it applies as a fact to never add to or take away from his word. That means they, we, should never let the opinions of men equal what God has put on record. God means what he says. We can't let men add to it or men take away from it. Listen, don't take away or add to what God has said by bad teaching or explaining things away that God has already said. Revelation 22, 18 through 19 says, For I testify to everyone who hears the word of this prophecy, of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will take his part written in the book and add to him the plagues in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words in the book of this prophecy, God will take his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things that are written in the book. Now listen, this happens in our society, and I'm talking about our church world society, oft times in ways that are very subtle and we don't understand. I personally sat in a seminar with a very intelligent person who repeatedly talked about the things in the Old Testament, the guidelines that are in the Old Testament, and I won't name the behavior, but you may draw your own conclusions about it, but it was in reference to a certain behavior. And this highly educated, very intelligent, ordained minister of the Word of God said that this particular behavior was only addressed in the Old Testament in archaic and outdated passages of Scripture with casual inferences or reference to that behavior. And that person obviously had been indoctrinated by the world's point of view to think, first of all, that the Word of God didn't really mean what it said. Second of all, to think that certain passages in the Bible are archaic and outdated. And I will tell you, this is the warning in the passage of Scripture that we should not add to or take away from the Word of God. And the, the Revelation, and it's speaking specifically of the Revelation when it says this, that those who add to or take away will suffer consequences that I don't even want to venture to get into at this point. What you have to understand is in this passage of Scripture that God's intention was that through their obedience to a covenant, he would exalt them to be witnesses to the nation. So if the Hebrews had this promise that God would exalt them and by exalting them draw other people to him, you see, that obedience was so that others would see that the Lord God of Israel was the Lord God of all nations. Doesn't it seem to make sense that in our day and time our obedience to the Word of God and God's intervention in the lives of those who are obedient would be a declaration to the world that this God that we serve is God. Now Moses also warned the people that they should take heed to themselves, take heed to yourselves and practice these truths before teaching them to their children. They were to teach them to their children. The old adage, do as I say and not as I do, would not work with God's people. He expected them, you see, to do as he said and to teach their children to do the same by example, not by words alone. Practice what you preach, preacher, but practice what you teach, teacher. Practice what you say, parent, mom, dad, grandparent. Those of you who would call yourself followers of Jesus Christ need to live what you say you believe. And you can't 
pick and choose what you want. You have to take God at His word. He's laid it out there. There's truth in the scripture if you just open it with a heart that says, I'm going to see what you have to say and let God teach you. See, Israel not only received the work of God in the law, but they entered into a covenant with God promising to obey Him. And God promised to bless an obedient Israel in Exodus 24, verses 1 through 8. So you remember where God had brought them from, and that's what He says to them, I brought you out of the iron furnace. It clearly indicates that God had delivered them, so He felt like, He states, that he has the right to be over them. He has the right to tell them what to do. Now listen, what does that mean to us? Well, we've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. We too have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. And God challenges the people in the Old Testament to learn from the example of Moses, who in spite of his many good works was not allowed to enter into Canaan. He knew God had a plan for his people, and he knew that that plan was going to go forward even without him. He knew he was replaceable. And anyone who thinks they're the only reason a ministry is in the world doesn't understand that God can do and does use anybody he wants to in his work. If the work depends solely on one person, listen, it's of the flesh, not of God. And God reminds the people that their success depends on him. But he also warns them that their disobedience is dangerous. He promised to help the Hebrews if they stayed true to him, but he also promised to scatter them among the nations if they ever worshipped other idols. And his chastisement would be to give them what their sinful hearts long for. And I believe that in our own world today, God gives people over to the desires of their flesh. That's what the New Testament teaches us. Sometimes you long for something and God will give it to you till it makes you sick. And God reminds his people that their disobedience is dangerous and their success depends on him. He promised to help them if they would stay true to him and he also promised to scatter them among the nations if they worshiped other gods. He gave them what they desired 550 years later. If they wanted idols, he gave them idols till their souls were sick. And that's exactly what happened in the Babylonian exile of Judah. Now, it wouldn't be fair to end the study with that picture because verses 29 through 31 in chapter 4 teach us that God would never totally abandon Israel though they were in exile. When they were ready to turn back to him, he would receive them if they turned back to him with all of their heart. And seeking God with your soul has the idea of of seeking God with your mind, with your will, and your emotions. With giving all of ourself to Him, that's when God responds and hears and forgives. You see, Israel could know the Lord their God because of the amazing things that He had done in their behalf in the nation of Israel, and He's reminding them. And by the same token, I think we need to consider how much God has touched our lives. May I ask you? Have you ever experienced the power to be free from sin? Have you ever been given hope when you were discouraged? Have you ever received a healing of your body? I had a surgeon tell me when our son was about to go into surgery for a brain tumor that he could go in and repair damage. He could help the damaged organs, remove things that didn't belong there, but only God could heal them. So even that skilled surgeon, heralded surgeon, understood that God heals. Have you ever received a healing of your body even if it was through modern medicine? Has God ever freed you from a bitter heart? Has He ever brought forgiveness to you and caused you to forgive others to your own amazement sometimes? Has He answered a prayer for you ever? Has He helped you ever to overcome what seemed like impossible obstacles? So when we consider the things that God's done for us, we too can know that God himself the Lord himself is God listen in light of who God is and all he's done obedience to his will makes perfect sense it's simply what should be done I have to tell you I think we're fools to disobey such a God of love and power you know the Lord sends his invitation in Isaiah 118 come now let us reason together says the Lord 
So when you consider the options, serving God's the only option. It's been said, democracy is the worst form of government ever created, except for all of the others. I think you could also say, serving God's the hardest way of living, except for all of the others. So what does all this mean to us? Well, <clears throat> Moses declared that obedience to the law would bring the people life. And he meant literally life of the body and of the nation. Now Jesus taught that obedience to the gospel rather than the law would give us life in our souls and eternal life with him. I think most people realize that Moses expected obedience to the law, but few people realize that Jesus expects obedience to the gospel, which is the source of eternal life and earthly hope. See, the kindness and goodness of God, the kindness and goodness of God is the greatest incentive <coughs> to obedience that we could ever know. Jay Parker says, who can hear? And Moses called upon the people to hearken, that means to listen. And who's ever met a man in any congregation that could listen? What's wanted today is good hearers. Parker says people are needed who would set aside all the other noise and all the conflicts and all the competition for the voice of God and with a spirit of expectation receive the speaking of the Word of God even from the slow speaking Moses and the prophets in the New Testament as though from God. So Moses says, hearken. The New Testament says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. And that means listen. Listen not for the noises that please, but let him hear. Such listening to the heart of God and the voice of God will never leave us disappointed. Can we be what well, Moses asked the people of Israel to be? Good listeners. You know, in order to listen, sometimes we just have to be still. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. No matter how long you've lived for the Lord, you need to listen more than you talk. Amen.